glasses, but I'm breaking out the fall wardrobe. It's so nice to see everybody. I'm a few minutes late because I was changing the lineup. Just before we were about to go live, Disney was like, here's some Loki viewership numbers. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> so I had to redo the live and redo all the, all the vi visuals and change the metadata. Oh, I didn't change the tags. I'll have to change that after we're done. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is a members uh, stream. Uh, of course, anyone is allowed to watch and join in that way. But if you'd like to be in the chat, uh, you know you need to be a member. Uh, by the way, if you're a BTT Movie Club member, if you're at that level, uh, I just put up a vote on the community tab on my YouTube channel right here. Uh, hey, Lawrence. Uh, thanks for joining. And uh, you can vote for what kind of movie watch along you'd like to do this month for Movie Club. Uh, hey, uh, PCI in New Jersey. Uh, so the thing is, is that you can either, um, we can either do, it's losing right now. One of the options was Mission Impossible this Friday, you know, the new Mission Impossible movie that comes out on digital tomorrow, uh, or a Halloween movie on Monday the 30th. Uh, I'm not doing Sundays anymore because I just can't realistically do a watch along the same day as movie math. I, get, I don't want to keep moving that on you guys. Uh, and right now, a Halloween movie is winning. So if that continues to be the case, we'll then vote on what the Halloween movie is. Um, you guys are so cute. I love your pre-stream discussions. Uh, I'll break out the new glasses soon. I'm still working up. You know, they're very snazzy. I get nervous about it. Oh, it's Canadian Thanksgiving, Patrick. Well, I, happy, happy Canadian Thanksgiving to you and yours. Uh, so we're going to go over today's uh, stories. Uh, I found three. Uh, this Loki one really saved my butt because it created a, a kind of like a headliner. I didn't. I mean, I could have done another Ask Me Anything, but I feel like some, I'm glad a lot of you use this for your movie news information, and so they can't all be Ask Me Anythings. I try to only do one Ask Me Anything a month. Otherwise... Has got to find stories. Uh, and I found three. And so we are having a movie news discussion today. There will be no stream tomorrow, uh, but I am going to shoot for three streams this week. Uh, but there's not going to be uh, a stream tomorrow. I hope they don't release a Captain Marvel final trailer because I won't be able to react to it. But if, I, if they do release one tomorrow, uh, I'll break it down on Wednesday, just so you know. Just so you know what's going on with, with me. All right, so the way live streams work, for those of you who are new to the party, uh, please keep your comments and questions uh, on topic uh, while we're discussing these stories. There's a Wonka trailer tomorrow. Ah, uh, darn it. I already, I already reacted to the first Wonka trailer and said it was crap. Um, all right, so anyway, keep your uh, comments to the story at hand. Also, even if you do a super chat before I open up each section to questions and comments, I might not answer you. That's just the roll of the dice. You're, you're running a risk if you do it that way. However, at the end of the stream, you can ask me anything that you'd like for the final 10 minutes. And that's where that's the best place to use your super chat and your, uh, your, your, your uh, you know, once a month uh, super free super chat if you're a member. Uh, that's, that's what I think would be the best thing to do. Uh, JB says, Grace, will you do a spoiler review for Wish? Depends how busy it is and depends how popular Wish is on its own. You know, a lot of that stuff, I usually don't do spoiler reviews unless a, a, a movie, the review reaches 100,000 views. Uh, sometimes I'll make an exception, but let's see. I think Wish is going to just completely crash and burn. But some people are really excited about it, so, so let's see. All right, let's, let's get started. Thank you, everybody, for joining today's live stream. For those of you who are, can be in the chat, hey, Heather. Uh, and for those of you who cannot but still join in, you are just as much appreciated. Oh, yeah, it's the first of the week. I got to gift me some memberships. Hold on. At, at the beginning of every week, I gift five memberships. Hold on. I just saw somebody else just gifted a bunch of memberships. Who just did that? Uh, Franco, thank you for gifting five memberships. That's so nice of you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to do the same. Here I come. Okay, here I go. It's the first of the month. Five memberships, the first of, every, I mean, the first of the week. Every, beginning of every week, I gift five memberships. I can't believe I almost forgot. Here we go. Oh, I just saw Dancing Dog 60 just did them too. There we go. Oh, yeah, here they come. It's raining memberships. Hold on, it's processing. Tut tut, looks like rain. Any minute now. Here they come. Woohoo. Oh boy, memberships, that's great. All right, 
Here we go. All right, let's get on to the news. All right. Welcome 15 new people to the chat. Although sometimes people get this when they're not watching and I love seeing those comments later. Someone comes in later and goes like, I, I think my favorite one from last week was some, oh, thanks writer boy. Thank you for gifting five memberships. Somebody was uh, uh, left a, a comment on the, on the video from last week and they were like, I was on a hike and I got a membership. It was amazing. And I thought that was really nice. Uh, yes, and as, um, who pointed that out? Prometheus said, hey, if you can't get a membership, if you want to maybe like the stream or subscribe, those things are free to do. That would be really appreciated. It would help me out. Uh, and and it's, that would just be, you know, it's just, just, a, just a click away, my friends. Just a click away. All right, here we go. Story number one. Boop. Oh, I covered up what the story is about, but you know what it is. Loki viewership, okay? So uh, just now. Loki debuted, of course, on Thursday evening, and Disney uh, now likes to release their own numbers, especially because there are other third-party groups like Samba TV, who knows where the heck their numbers come from, that like to rush out their own numbers, and you know, Disney Plus wants to control the narrative, which is totally understandable. I think they should. So, but I do feel, I do feel there's a lot of massaging going on here, especially based on what I've, you know, especially after we saw what happened with Ahsoka. That reporting, they were like, oh, Ahsoka's a huge hit. And then we're looking at the Nielsen numbers and we're like, is it? Is it a huge hit? So I would take all of this with a gigantic grain of salt until we see Loki pop up on Nielsen. Then we'll really know how it's doing. But so this is the, this is the headline from Disney uh, Plus. So in the first three days, Loki, the, se the first episode of season two, I'm working on my Loki breakdown today, actually, for episode two. It's so good, episode two. I'm so excited for you to see it. All right, so anyway, uh, in the first three days, it got 10.9 million views worldwide, okay? And they said the only show to beat it this year is The Mandalorian Season 3 debut, although the trades have pointed out that Disney Plus never released that number, so who knows how much Mando Season 2 beat it by. Uh, season 3, how much Mando Season 3 beat it by. And then Ahsoka was 14 million day of views, you might recall, but that was in the first five days. So that means that uh, Loki will probably outpace Ahsoka in the next two days. Uh, because remember, Ahsoka came out on a Tuesday. So they're going, you know, you know they, have, they have a different time frame. And I guess Disney Plus likes to release these headlines on Monday. I was trying to look for what the first week or first couple of days of Stranger Things season four or uh, Wednesday, what those view that viewership was. But those have all been done in minutes because those were prior to Netflix doing the views uh, calculations. So it's a little bit hard to go back there. And you know, the streaming services love that. They're like, yes, don't compare it to previous years. But how is it like compared to the first couple of like Disney? Uh, some of you are saying, what about WandaVision? What about the first Loki? By the way, Loki season one, still to this day, the most watched Disney plus Marvel show. Um, but of course the original, I think it's unfair to compare it to the original Disney plus shows, WandaVision, Loki and Falcon and Winter Soldier, because those came out of course, uh, during the pandemic, uh, and you know, everybody was home with nothing to do. So everybody of course watched it. It was a different time. Uh, you're just simply not going to be able to have that kind of viewership today. Uh, but I think this, this number to me seems okay. It doesn't seem like an amazing number. I'm not like, Ooh, I'm like, okay. I mean, honestly, my reaction is let's see the Nielsen numbers, especially because the, the, the headline for Ahsoka and then the reality, not only the first week of Ahsoka, but Ahsoka was like second and third week. I mean, that to me really was telling. Uh, I have to say, I thought, I, I'm surprised. I think there is a lack of chatter around Loki. I think part of the issue is, is that it's a very self-contained show, <clears throat> which is both good and bad. You don't have to have watched anything else but Loki season one to enjoy Loki season two. But at the same time, at least so far, it isn't really tying into the rest of the MCU. I mean, people were grasping at straws with that X-Men uh, supposed Easter egg last week. They were like, is that the Cerebro door? And that didn't occur to me at all, which why it was, it wasn't in my breakdown. But like, I thought about it and I was like, but why would there be a correlation there with the X-Men door? That would say that uh, Ouroboros, you know, Kei Hui Kwan's character built Cerebro. But 
Cerebro is built by Professor Xavier and Magneto, and I really would not like to see that retconned at all. I mean, that to me would uh, annoy me. <laughs> I would be like, um, Professor X and Magneto built that, quite frankly. Uh, oh, not, uh, yes, you remember when the door would open with the X and it would have, it was very cool. I remember it from the X-Men movies, but I, I didn't, I didn't see that when I was watching the show, but people were like X-Men reference. And that's what kind of got anybody talking. And I was like, you know, an Easter egg that might not even be there. That's rough. Uh, so anyway, that's right, Malik. Uh, Deadpool three, of course, deals with the X-Men, X-Men and the TVA. But from what I've heard, the TVA doesn't start the X-Men. They're trying to save the X-Men, quite frankly. All right. So anyway, whatever. Uh, um, so I, I don't know. I mean, let's see. Maybe it is. Maybe, I mean, I know Kevin Feige is a huge X-Men fan. Uh, and so when I really looked close at the door, I was like, maybe. But I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, and also, it's less comics-based. Did I say quite frankly? I didn't even realize it. I love it. All right. And also, uh, Loki season two is less comics based. When we were watching Loki season one, we were like, oh, where's kid Loki? Where are the other Lokis? Where are the Loki variants? They're going to pull off of, uh, you know, Loki comics through the years. So that really helped in that regard. But now, I mean, I really, I don't think it's as comics based. You know, they have little Easter eggs, but not to the degree where it's a huge factor in the show. I'm also curious as to whether or not Thursday nights was a good idea, uh, especially during football season. Apparently, that does, maybe Tuesdays was the better night, uh, you know, because Thursday night, I think, is uh, football, Thursday night football, and then I think a lot of people are getting ready for the weekend. I mean, I think they wanted to build it off of, like, Thursday must-see TV back in the day, NBC's lineup, but uh, I don't know if it really works. I'm curious. Let me do a poll as to uh, whether or not you like the, the Thursday night drop, now that it's a reality. Because Sunday was, is really great for HBO. Do you like the Thursday 9 p.m. Disney Plus drop time? And by the way, even if you're not a member, you can vote in this poll. Uh, polls are open to anyone who's watching, okay? You just have to click on the link in the chat. So love it, hate it. Uh, no, okay, so love it, hate it, I'm sleeping. Hate it, I'm watching, I'm watching football. And then hate it, I'm doing something else. Or other stuff is shorter. That fits in the space. Okay, there you go. Vote away, my pretties. Gen V is also on Thursday, but I got to tell you, I, I will wait till we see what the Nielsen ratings are like, but I think Gen V is a horrible flop. I think Gen V is just, I think nobody's watching it, which is really going to suck for the boys season four because it's heavily reliant on Gen V. Everyone's going to be like, what just happened? I love Gen V too, Lucas. I'm going to break it down when the season's over. Fritz, sleeping in Europe is a perfectly good excuse. Although most of you seem to love the new drop time. So, interesting. But we'll see. So that's what the first Loki headline is. No SMR goose. Gen V is one hour earlier. Gen V drops at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Loki drops at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You know what? I felt so sad for somebody last week. I should go back and tell them. Uh, in the comments, someone said to my breakdown, they were like, oh, it really burns me that I have to wait another three hours to be able to watch Loki because it doesn't drop until 9 p.m. Pacific. And I was like, no, it drops 9 p.m. Eastern. It drops the same time Pacific. You could be watching it right now. I hope that person figured it out. I felt very bad for them. Oh, Mr. Magic, have a good dentist appointment. That is an acceptable interruption. All right, let's see what the poll is, and then we shall go to the next story. Boy, Hollywood needs to wake up. It is slow right now. So slow. Okay, 55% of you love it. So half, half, that's pretty good. 
but then 45% are not pleased. 22% are doing other things. That's interesting. 16% of you are sleeping, right? And then 5% of you only are watching football. So football is clearly not a factor. That's interesting. Uh, Greg Lazaro says, K. Hui Kwan was fantastic. I'd love to see him follow up his Oscar with an Emmy. That would be pretty cool. I think he might get nominated, but I don't know about him winning, quite frankly. I think that it's just hard for these Disney Plus shows. Let's see how Andor does. It'll be very interesting. There's a lot of genre nominations for the Emmys this year, which are now in January. So I'm very curious to see what's, what's going to happen. All right, let's go on. Oh, does anyone have any questions or comments about this story? Look at Sonny on vacation, just coming in here. I hope you're having a good time on vacation, Sonny. Where are you? Mika says Loki isn't saving the MCU. What will? <clears throat> I still think it's Deadpool 3. Is that even technically the MCU, though? Ah, Tammy, thanks for upgrading to Movie Club. Welm says, I feel that going to the multiverse route was a mistake, creating a disjointed mess and is ruining DC and Marvel. Yeah, I think the multiverse was a horrible idea. I don't like it. I don't think streaming is really working out. I don't think the multiverse is really working out. These were, these were bad ideas. Uh, let's see here. Ivan says, could the actor strike be at fault for the viewership? I don't think so. I, don't, I mean, because they can't promote it? I don't think so. I mean, look, they did a pretty good job, I think, getting Loki out there. Uh, I watch uh, a DVR Family Guy, and I was watching it this morning with my breakfast, and they had ads for Loki running on it. They were like, oh, you know what's on Disney Plus right now? Loki. Stephen Munson says the X-Men door could be seen by TVA characters who then... So you think OB is ripping off the X-Men? I don't know about that. Jake Van Norden says, I think it would have been a much better idea to do X-Men now once we had a new X-Men to dive into Secret Wars. Uh, no, I, I don't know. I think because they really want to... I would think they want to say goodbye to the Fox X-Men first before bringing in the new ones, and I can understand that. Cowboy Kush. It's Grace. I'm finding myself spending most of my time consuming entertainment on YouTube and other social media. I wonder if this is the same for the general audience right now. It might have. You know, I think the, the strike and, the, and, the, and the, some of the lack of quality and traditional entertainment might have pushed people to other things. If you want to watch YouTube, I ain't going to complain. Hello, spend time with me. Let's see here. Wade Pierre, are you really not watching Loki? That's crazy. Loki's so good. Sean Adams, but which Jean Grey? Maybe both. Shahar says, how accurate is Nielsen? It doesn't count computers, tablets, or phones. Only if you saw via a television. Um, I don't, I think, and also it's only domestic, but I think it's the only thing that gives us a real genuine third party look at how the shows are competing with each other. Uh, you know, like how are, how are, how are they doing for the, in the space and up against one another? I'm glad you guys are on YouTube. I love it. Klaus, I don't think that Jonathan Majors is a factor. I mean, he hasn't even really been, he has not even in the first episode and they haven't really been using him to promote it at all. Thanks, Poke. That's a nice thing to say. Marcus says, should Marvel do a Loki movie? I don't know. The Loki show is so good. I don't know if he needs his own movie, but I do wonder if it means he can't be in movies anymore because there's just so much Loki on streaming. I would love for, like, why isn't he? Why isn't it he and Mobius? Although, I kind of know the answer to that. I found a, I heard a spoiler from a source about Loki. So I can't say it, but you'll find out. I don't want to ruin it. I have mixed feelings about it. Let me see how they do it. Ste uh, Stebity says, I'm only looking forward to Secret Wars so we can get past all the dumb multiverse stuff. That's funny. I hope so. That would be great. I think Secret Wars will be fun, quite frankly. Uh, and Slomo says, how heavily do you think the Loki series will tie into the movies going forward? Um, I'm not sure how much, you know, I haven't seen the final two episodes, although I'm getting the idea that they really are potentially setting up Kang Dynasty, although I don't really know if anybody cares about Kang Dynasty anymore, so I don't really know what the point of setting that up would be, and then that makes watching, 
watching Loki season two more moot because you're like, well, I don't care about Kang Dynasty. So who cares what led up to it? So that's tough. Ah, oh, look at Arsenio trying to fast forward. All right, I'll do two more questions and then I must fast forward. Let's see. Ferrucci says, what about hero fatigue? Yeah, there's a lot of that right now. And I got to tell you, I, uh, I'll do a poll about Kang. Hold on. Maybe it's too early. You haven't seen him on this show yet. Now well, let's hold off. But um, let's see. Welm says, here's the, DC is about to pour a whole bunch of, you know, gasoline on the superhero fire. I think it's going to be too much. Welm says, what if, here's the question. Will it be bad if Secret Wars doesn't make as much or more money than Endgame did at the box office? It would be, I don't think Endgame is an appropriate. I think, I just think as long as you make a billion dollars, Marvel and Disney will be happy. <clears throat> is that Seattle Launard? Oh, my goodness. Seattle Launard, your generosity. You know, you blew me away last week. You're so generous today. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you. And when it's so slow, forget about doing something nice for myself. Uh, everyone's generosity just helps the channel, quite frankly. All right, let's move to the next story. Okay, story number two. Boop, boop. Oh, by the way, Amazon Prime Day is coming up, and I'm watching uh, Upload Season 3, my screeners. It's not as good. They really, you know, they lost the thread on that. I'm not enjoying it, actually. Okay, but I'll probably still finish it. Okay. Story number two. Boop. Oh, look who's back. Nelson Peltz. Remember, his daughter is Nicola Peltz. Uh, sometimes actress. Isn't she married to like a Beckham or something? She's, I'm, I forget who Nicole Peltz is. But, you know, she's kind of big for a while. Uh, but her father is a huge hedge fund guy, hedge fund. Uh, Nelson Peltz, he runs like some hedge fund group. And they own a bunch of Disney stock. And you might recall that back in February, he tried to push his way on. Oh, she married Brooklyn Beckham. That's right. So the Peltz family is connected, my friends. They're very connected. That's right, Brooklyn. Uh, uh, that's crazy. Uh, all right, so that's really interesting. You know, you, you marry who you can meet, quite frankly. I think people forget about that. When I did a comic book called Superbia, um, you know, the editor was like, who should Wonder Woman be married to? My Wonder Woman, you know, character. And I was like, she should be married to a character that she would probably conceivably meet. So that's why I had her marry an architect. Uh, so I'm mean, you know, like an archaeologist, not an architect. <laughs> Why would she marry an architect? Mm -hmm. An archaeologist. Thank you very much. All right. So anyway, back to Nelson Peltz. Nelson P Peltz runs a big financial group, and they own a lot of stock. And one of the things they own stock in is the Disney company. So back in February, he tried to push his way onto the Disney board. Ah, oh, thanks, Mandy. You're, that's a, an adorable sticker. So anyway... Uh, he tried to push his way onto the board, and Bob Iger was able to beat him back, not only with a plan to, you know, uh, reinvigorate Disney, which Nelson Peltz said he felt okay about, but then also Bob Iger was like, let me tell you who Nelson Peltz is working with. He's working with Isaac Perlmutter, and Isaac Perlmutter is trying to wreak his revenge on the Disney company because Bob Iger fired uh, Isaac Perlmutter for basically just being incredibly difficult, nobody liking him. Uh, but, you know, that really, that really smarted for Perlmutter. And Perlmutter owns stock as well, by the way, part of which he got when Disney purchased Marvel. Part of the purchase price was stock in Disney. But he's fired and he doesn't work there anymore. But he's still a stock owner. So he, uh, and also, both of them, particularly Perlmutter, but I mean, if Nelson Peltz is friends with Isaac Perlmutter, he probably is too. But Perlmutter is very pro-Trump. So these are somewhat conservative individuals, you might say. Okay. Now, that was back in February, and Bob Iger was able to get rid of Nelson Peltz, by, again, as I said, by saying that he was going to reinvigorate the company. But instead, the stock just continues to go down. It was back at $113 uh, back in February when Nelson Peltz first tried this, and today it's $83. Oh, that's, uh, it's continuing to drop. <clears throat> so now Nelson Peltz not only wants a seat on the board once again, but he wants additional seats. So he's like, one for me and some for my friends. I wonder if, by the way, one would go to Perlmutter because you can put whoever you want into those seats, interestingly enough. Oh, that's pretty interesting. 
So uh, let's see if Bob Iger can push him off again. And in the meantime, you know, Nelson Peltz just didn't sit around and wait to see what Bob Iger, if whether or not Bob Iger delivered. Peltz acquired more shares. And he's up to owning $2.5 billion worth of the, of the stock at this point. So he is a huge shareholder. So uh, in the spring, that's when this, this leaked today. This leaked that this is what Peltz is thinking to do. So uh, February, fe- I mean, the spring is when, you know, Peltz can, I'm trying to fix the lighting. This is when uh, Peltz can try it uh, again. So we'll see. What's going on here? Can, is this going to help? That helps a little. Yeah. So spring is uh, basically when Peltz is going to make another run at this. And so we'll see. I don't know if Peltz is the right guy to do this, quite frankly. I don't know if he has the right mentality to run Disney. But I do think that the stock continuing to fall is a problem. And I think that Bob Iger has not corrected course. So I told you before that I would fire everybody who works there uh, at Disney, every, the, the division of every single head, uh, the head the, the, I mean, the head of every single division except for Kevin Feige. And then I would use that as a, a warning shot across the bow for Kevin Feige. I'd be like, look, I just fired everybody but you. Are you next? Turn your division around. So let's see if, you know, I mean, but Bob Iger really hasn't fired anybody except those two people who made Lightyear. <laughs> That's how bad Lightyear was. He, was. he fired just the two people who made Lightyear. So, I, I mean, we'll see what they decide to do. Um, I think Disney does have an issue. I mean, Disney should not be struggling as much as they are. Uh, and Iger has not really fixed things. But I, again, I don't know if I think, I don't know if Peltz things would make things better or worse, quite frankly. Uh, and so we'll see. Also, I wonder if all these new board members uh, could maybe block a potential sale. You know, if Bob Iger wanted to sell Disney to somebody else, could maybe Nelson Peltz and his uh, additional board members, could they maybe stop that? And then I'd be like, bring them in. Bring them in here. I do not want to see. Under, I mean, the, thing, the worst thing I can see that would happen would be Disney would be sold to another company. That, to me, is game over. Uh, so let's see what happens. You know, Disney has survived problems before. Uh, after Walt's death, they had significant issues finding leadership to take over. Uh, Walt very, very chauvinistically left the company to his son-in-law, who was a former college football player who knew absolutely nothing about running a company like this. Uh, I always, you know, I'm a big Walt fan, but it always bothered me that he made no effort to, you know, train his daughters as his successors. Uh, I think because he didn't expect them you know, because of the time period that they would even do that. Uh, and then, you know, Roy Disney's son was always trying to be like, I look just like him. And then you were like, but you have none of the talent, Roy Jr. Uh, so he caused a lot of problems. So uh, that was the first problem that they had. Uh, Michael Eisner eventually came along and that turned out great. Uh, but then, of course, Mike Ovitz kind of hurt them a little bit when he came on board. And then they lost Jeffrey Katzenberg and then they had another problem. Uh, but then, you know, Bob Iger ushered in this great era, uh, mostly by buying stuff. He went on a shopping spree, what a, one heck of a shopping spree. And now they have, you know, Chapik really messed things up. And, you know, of course, Iger is culpable for that because he's the one who picked him. So it's tough. I mean, it happens. You know, I just hope that Disney can hang in there and doesn't get swallowed up like they swallowed up Fox. Oh, it would be karma. It would be karma. Ah, oh. uh, Nicholas Corinne says, it's like Disney and Succession had a baby. That's hilarious. You know, uh, one of you, I think his name is Sergio, who is uh, Dominican, living in the UK. I looked at his bio because I was like, this guy's awesome. He sent me a picture of he went to a signing uh, with, uh, uh, with, you know, the actor who plays Logan Roy. Uh, and he asked him about succession. And I loved that the guy said uh, he, you know, if Tom had lived, he would have picked Tom as his successor as well. And that just made me very happy because I'm a big Tom fan. I love Tom. Uh, Brian Cox. Thank you, Mika. I was uh, not thinking of the name. Uh, but yeah, he's Logan Roy for the rest of his life. Let's be honest. But yeah. All right. So we'll see what happens. Does anyone have any questions about this story before we go on to this crazy Hollywood story about Michael Crichton? Or Crichton, depending how you want to pronounce it. He was an X2 Sockley. Brian Cox is not above a paycheck gig. And he was pretty good in X2, but he was not the best. He was one of the worst parts, though, I have to say. Ah, uh, Danny, I'm glad you made it. Kat Clemmer says, are the movies causing the problem at Disney? How are the parks doing? Ah, uh, thank you, Fent. Thank you. Uh, Kat, uh, Kat, 
the parks, the, uh, the, the experiences, the, the theme park experiences and the cruise ships are the only division that's turning a, a profit right now, which is why they're throwing so much money into that. They said they were going to throw in like billions of dollars over the next 10 years. The movies are just a horrible a, a problem. And also Disney Plus is just requiring too much money and not getting enough returns for it. Uh, I think some people today were saying, oh, you know, like uh, Disney Plus is the only threat to Netflix. And you're like, is it though? Because Disney Plus might have great brand recognition, but does Disney Plus have anything like the kind of content that Netflix does and the kind of viewership? It doesn't seem to. Uh, Platinum Diva, I'm so glad you enjoyed today's stories. That makes me very happy. Uh, let's see here. Dwight Baldwin says, how does Kennedy still have a job? It's very suspicious, Dwight. I think because I told you before, nobody else wants the job. But at this point, if her contract, if she doesn't bow out after her current contract, uh, people are just going to revolt. That's right, CB. Disney Plus is causing a lot of problems. And Bob Iger did that to not just Disney, but all of Hollywood. That's right, SMR Goose. The Disney bundle price is going up. I got that email myself. Not happy about it. Nilfinity says you really need to check out Disney War. It will really change how you think of Roy Disney. Which one, junior or senior? I don't know. I mean, like for the positive or the negative? I'm not a big Roy Jr. fan. I think he is untalented. Celine says, am I the only person who doesn't watch Netflix? You might be, Celine. Okay, Spiderlink's just talking about being Ken. I think it's time to move on to the next story. <laughs> All right, hint received. All right, next story. Um, Cosmic says, give Iger more time. Cosmic, I hope things are going well for you at film school, by the way. I hope you're feeling more confident. I'm not giving him more time. I mean, he's had a lot of time. Luke says, Grace, I'm finally a member thanks to the community, community's amazing generosity. Ah, oh, yay, you got gifted a membership. A film nerd in England, I love film nerds across the globe, being one myself. All right, let's move on to the final story, and then we'll do the Q&A. All right, hold on. Third story of the day. Boom, baby! This was funny. I just read it as a laugh this morning, and then I needed a story for today. So we can laugh about it together. So, so uh, this morning I saw a headline that said, Michael Crichton and James Patterson are teaming up for a book. And... All the studios are expected to have a bidding war for it. Remember, we just talked yesterday about the $400 million that uh, Universal paid for Exorcist thanks to a bidding war. So I hope people don't let this stuff get up too high. That's right, Mika. Michael Crichton did write Westworld. That's true. That is his other claim to fame besides Jurassic Park. He also wrote The Andromeda Strain, which is somewhat well known, and then Congo, which was a crappy movie. But you know, Michael Crichton basically, yeah, it's Jurassic Park and Westworld, quite frankly. But that's right, Michael Crichton unfortunately passed away. So when I saw that headline this morning, I was like, oh, ER2? Well, that's pretty good. But I was like, oh man, it can't be Michael Crichton. I can't be who I'm thinking of, because he's dead. It must be a different author. For a minute, I thought it was Grisham, John Grisham. I was like, who's this other author? And then I was like, oh, it is Michael Crichton. So yes, Michael Crichton unfortunately passed away. However, before he died, there was a book that he was writing that was unfinished. And so his wife, who is now handling his estate, has decided to get this book off the ground. And she approached James Patterson to help her finish it. Uh, this is hilarious to me. I think I can't think of a worse combination, quite frankly. So James Patterson, he's pretty well known. He's written a lot of books, right? So I think the only ones that were made into movies really were his Alex Cross novels, the African-American police detective, initially played by Morgan Freeman, and then Tyler Perry tried to take over the franchise and it didn't work out. But James Patterson, like, right, he is the king of the airport book, right? Like, you go to the airport and uh, people are buying this stuff. Apparently it's like, I read an article a couple of years ago or so about James Patterson. And did James Patterson write Twister? Who wrote Twister? Hold on. Twister novel. Oh, that's Michael Crichton. Yeah, so it's still just Michael Crichton. So what's James Patterson bringing into this? That's right, Randall, you're getting ahead of me. But so, yeah, so apparently James Patterson, he has a factory of book writers, and he just sticks his name on them, quite frankly. That's, oh, I said it again! <laughs> 
So that's what James Patterson, that's, what, that's how he's so wealthy. He has a reputation, but he feels like he wrote enough books. So basically what he does is he trains writers to write in his style. And they have really big font. And they, um, they have like these cliffhanger endings and they all have a style. Yeah, that's right, Nick Bellis. He did the early version of Chat GPT, Patterson GPT. And so all these people working for him just write all the books. Uh, and then he, uh, and then he just sticks his name on it. And then a really small font underneath, you, are, you usually see the other person, uh, who actually wrote it. So I'm surprised that they would pick James Patterson to join up with Michael Crichton. I think they're such an odd mix. I don't really see them as a mix. You know, Michael Crichton, Twister, that's pretty good. That's pretty good that he wrote Twister. So here's the thing. So they're hoping for a movie deal, right? Uh, if I were a development executive, I wouldn't have high hopes for this, but I would want to read it just because the other things were so successful. I'd be like, let's see what Crichton has up his sleeve. You know, Dwight, that's funny that you say Crichton's books are always topics of the time, because let me tell you what this one is about. So this is about a volcano in Hawaii, which erupts, which of course happened recently. And also there's the recent tragedy uh, of the fires just in Hawaii. Uh, but I don't really know if people think that's the appropriate thing to make a movie about at this time. But anyway, this is a book about a volcano that erupts in Hawaii. But as the lava is spilling down, it goes towards a secret chemical weapons cache, which threatens the world. That made me laugh so hard this morning because I was like, that's so 90s. I don't even think they make movies like that anymore. I don't know if anybody would be interested in a movie like that. And I was like, how could Michael Crichton make that work? Chasing twisters, that kind of works. You know, all this other stuff, you know, artificial intelligence kind of works. All that stuff that Michael Crichton did kind of works even today. But now this sounds to me like a parody of a Michael Crichton novel. That's right, Dante's Peak. Cowboy Kush. Remember the two uh, um, uh, volcano movies that came out at the same time back then? Dante's Peak, and I think the other one was like Volcano or something. And get this, get, get what this one is called. Uh, I, got, I thought it was called Explosion at first, okay? Because I was doing the metadata for this video, but I was like, I better check. And it's called, I kid you not, Eruption. <laughs> it's so dumb. It does sound like an AI pitch for a D movie, Lander. That's hilarious. So yeah, it's called Eruption by Michael Crichton and James Patterson. Right there, people are going to be, I think it's going to be of two different total groups being like, should we even buy this? That's right, Mika. Roland Emmerich should just say, stop the bidding. This, is my, this was meant for me. So yeah, it's called Eruption, and it's about a volcano in Hawaii that's going to uh, touch a secret, get, get over a secret chemicals weapons cache that will be released on the globe and kill a, uh, and kill everybody. And you're like, what the heck is this? So I just feel that Michael Crichton's wife didn't try very hard. <laughs> I think maybe he should have been a little specific about writers he'd be happy to have his work paired with, quite frankly, uh, after he passed away. Thanks for joining, Broderick. Uh, I just think it's hilarious. So that's that's what this is. And so again, I would buy, I would, if I were the, if I were, oh, I mean, Jeff Goldblum, Platinum Diva, that's funny. Maybe if I could get Jeff Goldblum, maybe if I could make it, maybe if I could make it a comedy. Maybe if I, or, or that's right, maybe Donis, Netflix should just pick this up. Netflix is like, yoink, we'll take it. Uh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Or Michael McKennis, that's right, very triple X, that Vin Diesel thing, or SNL sketch. But I kind of like it as a comedy. If I could maybe do it as a comedy with those, and just the comedy of the ridiculousness of Michael Crichton and James Patterson, maybe it could work. You see, this is why you have a development room because you know, you got, you know, you think, you know, it's a development executive's job to say maybe, right? As fans, we're often like, that's so dumb. But I think a development executive's job is to be like, you know, there might be money here. Let me think about it. And you guys, you guys do a great job. We're a little development room ourselves. And you know, you make me feel okay. Get me the get me the early advanced copy of uh, of Eruption. Uh, maybe we'll buy it, right? I wouldn't let the, the bidding get too high, though. I wouldn't spend that much on it. I mean, I have to pay a lot for Michael Crichton and James Patterson, clearly. But I I wouldn't pay. Me. I think I gotta pay for the movie. But the deals today, I'd offer them back end. I I'd be like, I'm only doing this as a back end deal. 
I'm not, you got you to gotta put your money where your mouth is. And maybe I'd give them $40 million, $20 million a piece. Oh, that hurts. But they're big names. See, this is the second problem. See, the development executive then passes the ball to the suits, and the suits go, how much am I willing to pay for this? That's right, Haunted Auto. Michael Bay could get in on this too. That's hilarious. Nicholas Cage. I feel you, yeah, this could be funny. I kind of am liking it if we do it stupid. If we take the stupid approach, I might work. All right, so those are the three stories of the day. Give yourself all a round of applause. You guys are a good development room. Let's see here. Maybe even a great development room. All right, so Q&A time, my friends. It's 5.20, and we have time to do shout-outs today. Q&A. Ten, oh, the Sci-Fi Channel can't afford this Alien Moose Studios. Q&A, 10 minutes until 5.30. What's on your mind? What's on your mind, everybody? Oh, Chico, what are your thoughts on the Crown release date? That was the story that I was going to do today. I think it's interesting that Netflix won't go to a weekly release schedule, but they do seem to like this two-part schedule where, you know, they kind of release them like a month or so apart and that they hope extends the conversation. Does it? I think it did for you in Stranger Things, but I don't know about The Crown. The Crown hasn't really, I think Imelda Stoughton's not really bringing it. Gaga Stan says, hey Grace, what's your favorite episode of the four you've seen for Loki? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think episode two, the one that's airing this week, but they're all excellent. I love them all. Frog Eater says, two questions for you, Grace. First, thoughts on the news of Midnight Mass's Joyce Sherry writing and directing the upcoming Tiana animated series for Disney+. Plus. That's just one question, Frog Eater, due in 2024. I'm thrilled. You know, obviously you want an African-American woman he heading up this project. I love Tiana. I love what Disney has planned for her. And I hope to God that this is good. But I think I'm very excited for it. But uh, Tiana is very far away. No, Tiana... Frog Eater, I heard Tiana's probably coming out in 2025. Moana is coming out in 2024, and I think Tiana will probably be 2025, unfortunately. Uh, I don't know if Deadpool 3 is going to keep its release date, Aiden. They're just saying that right now. They still haven't started filming yet, have they? Uh, thanks, MR, New Grow. That's a nice thing to say. Sock Lee says, is there seriously any shot at a short round spinoff with Kei Hui Kwan? Sock Lee, I, as I said yesterday on Movie Math, I feel very good about how Indiana Jones is performing on iTunes. So let's see what it does on Disney+. Plus. Let's see what the numbers are when it hits that. If it does really well, I'm telling you, it seems like I, I, think there's a, I think there's hope. KO, no news on the actor's strike just yet. I believe they're meeting today. They have really tough stuff to negotiate, though. It's going to be harder than the writers. Oh, Sleepless Night says the WGA ratified their contract. That's great. That's awesome. Americo McDowell says, what are your thoughts on the Beekeeper trailer? Oh, it looked ridiculous. But I don't know. I mean, would I watch it on an airplane or, you know, maybe... I like Jason Statham, just like everybody else. I like Jason Statham, but I, I, th I don't know why it had to be called the beekeeper. It was very silly, but they explained it in the trailer. I felt like I saw a lot of the movie too. Let's see. Frog and I was like, why is Jeremy Irons in this? And there was someone else famous in it too, or some woman. I forgot who it was. That was pretty crazy. Jeremy Irons likes to go on vacation and have nice stuff too. All right, Frog Eater says, second, what do you think of the rap saying they expect Disney to keep oh, Deadpool 3? I just said that. Um, I, I don't think that they will. I mean, let's see. They'd have to start shooting again real soon. I can see why they want to keep Deadpool 3 there because it's a real kick off the summer movie uh, season kind of kind of film. Uh, but uh, I still think, I still wouldn't be surprised if it switched with uh, Captain America 4, which is coming out in July. Little brother Gabriel says, I have a loaded question. Okay, you look so sweet in your photo, Gabriel. Let's see how loaded this is. Do you think of the adventure genre films and 2D animated films could come back since nostalgia is big right now? Oh, I don't know. I don't know about 2D coming back. I think that its best shot are these 
shorts like Tiana. Wouldn't that be wonderful if they did well there? I would love a 2D animated movie to come back. Uh, and they're trying to do that with Wish a little bit, but I don't really think it's working. But at the same time, I just don't think it would make enough money at the box office, unfortunately. Mandy, I don't know why you can't send Super Chats. That doesn't make any sense, Mandy. The Wiccan fan says, any new tea on Wiccan or Hulkling? Still hoping the Billy Leaks from Agatha turn out better than they sound. Yeah, I'm really nervous about that show. I don't have any new news for you, Wiccan fan, but uh, I'm nervous. Classic Bunny Librarian said, is Elemental still doing well? Hold on. Where did that go? Uh, is Elemental still doing well on Disney Plus? Do you think there are chances of a sequel? Uh, it's too early to tell, Classic Bunny Librarian. We got to wait for it to get to, um, to, to Nielsen, Nielsen ratings, and then we have to see how it does for a couple of weeks. And then we'll have a better idea if they're going to do a sequel. I bet you they do like maybe a short or something. I really loved Elemental. I would love to see what happens to Wade and Ember. Dory Does Voices says, The Adventures of Short Round. I don't know if he's going to get his whole own show. Who just gifted a membership? Thank you, Americo McDowell. That's very generous of you. Bubbles Emporium says, Any thoughts or updates on fantastic forecasting? I told you that I wouldn't count out Matt Smith. I heard they're really pushing for Matt Smith. So we'll see. I'm excited to see them finally announce it. Let's see. Ricardo, your birthday's tomorrow. There's no stream tomorrow, so let me say happy birthday to you today. I have seen, I think I saw like one Elvira movie once. Tanvi, I don't know if Aquaman 2 is a theater-worthy movie. We got to see. Oh, Michael, very generous of you to gift the 10 memberships. Thank you. Frog Eater says, if I were Disney, I'd put Snow White and Deadpool 3's May 3rd release date. Move Lilo. Oh, you got a lot of ideas, Frog Eater. I love it. Uh, they haven't even, I mean, they were shooting actually Lilo and Stitch. I don't know. I got to see what Stitch looks like, quite frankly. I feel like that's going to be an abomination. You would move Deadpool 3 to December? I don't know about that. I don't know if Deadpool's a December movie. I mean, it could be an anything movie, but we'll see. David Kyle says, Grace, will you be voting for Carrie Mulligan at, Cr at Critics' Choice? Uh, maybe for a nomination, but I don't see me voting for her for Best Actress to actually win it. Alex Legate says, have you seen the new TV short for the Marvels that only focuses on the Avenger Captain Marvel, ignoring the other two entirely? I have not seen it, but uh, I'm, I don't know. I think that movie, I don't know. I'm just trying to give it the benefit of the doubt, even though I think it's not going to go well for that. And I had another question here. Where would that go? Oh, they're disappearing. Hold on. Let me go back and find these. Okay. The guy, I saw a few episodes of Mr. Robot when it first came out, but I just didn't particularly like the show. Dylan Powers says, Jaden Michael from My uh, Miles Morales, he's Afro-Latino. Uh, you know, I think they're so far from doing Miles Morales right now. I think these conversations are moot because you need someone who's in a kind of an age range where they're going to get out of that so quickly that anyone who qualifies right now probably won't qualify uh, what, by the time they have to cast the role. Zunigator says, what should our dinner plans be for Loki episode two? Great question. This is the McDonald's and the key lime pie episode. So you should at least have one or the other. You got to have, um, you got to have McDonald's and or key lime pie for this week. Vince Lamb says, my wife and I enjoyed Haunted Mansion and we're looking forward to Dial of Destiny. That's awesome, Vince. I like your positivity. I'm glad you're enjoying the Disney Plus, your Disney Plus subscription and getting a lot out of that. Anton says, I'm going to see the Taylor Swift film on Friday, and I'm beyond excited. Are you going to go, Grace? I don't think I'm going to go, Anton. I'm sorry. I think I just, I got too much going on this weekend. And Frog Eater says, related to the first two topics, Grace, I think Ahsoka and Loki season two's five-day debut will be equally 14, and I think Pete Doctor and Jennifer Lee should stay. Oh, I don't agree. I think Je Pete Doctor and Jennifer Lee, who are running up Pixar and Disney animation, should definitely go. But you might be right. Maybe they'll shake out and be the same. Uh, you know, in terms of viewership for Loki and Ahsoka. Anton Zender says, oh, sorry, I already got that one. Hold on. Roll the Bryce. I did not see Zoe Kravitz's new face. That's an interesting question. 
Uh, who just gifted a bunch of memberships? Mandy! Ah, oh, Mandy, I feel bad your super chat's not working, but you certainly made your presence known another way. 20 memberships, that's incredible. Let's see here. Uh, John Ashford says, any word if Ryan Gosling is doing sequels to his movies Drive or The Gray Man? Not any, I haven't heard anything about that, and he has another different total action movie coming up this next year. Tom says, Grace, will you be reviewing Marvel's Spider-Man 2 on October 20th? I'll try to. Let me see, because, you know, it's in my wheelhouse, so I'll take a look at it. Uh, Adriatic says, what do you think about Rachel Zegler allegedly being fired from Paddington 3? I haven't heard anything about that, but I love Paddington, and with all due respect to Rachel Zegler, I, I, don't, want, I don't want her anywhere near Paddington. <laughs> Leave Paddington alone. He doesn't need the drama. Michael, I think I thanked you for the memberships. That was very kind of you. Uh, Michelle says, Grace, how can Matthew McConaughey be on a talk show? Well, that's because he's not promoting uh, an acting project. He's pr working on other things that he's, he's talking about other things that he's doing. So he's not crossing the picket line. Jeremy Campos says, how many Taylor Swift tickets are you losing out on? I'm losing out on three, quite frankly, three tickets. Roderick says, hey, Grace, I'm in film school for my first short and wanted to ask, preparing for my first short, and wanted to ask if you could help me promote your, our fundraiser. Uh, I don't know how to connect on Twitter. It won't let me unless I'm verified. You can, you can only DM me if you're verified? That doesn't matter. I don't think that's true. Uh, see what you can do, Broderick. Um, I'm reluctant to do that because then I'd have to do everybody's. Uh, and then how do I choose? And then it becomes too much. Uh, so... Uh, that's, that, that puts me, at a, just to be honest with you, Broderick, that puts me in a difficult spot. Ohad says, these are difficult days here in Israel. Your videos are, uh, give me time to clear my head of the news. Are you in Israel, Ohad? I hope you're staying safe. Uh, I feel horrible for the, the tragic loss of life, and I feel it's such a failure of diplomacy, what's happening in, in the Middle East, and I just feel awful for what's happening. D. Brent Hansen, uh, the Mission Impossible 7 watch along is losing out in the poll right now on the community page for BTT Movie Club members. So if you're a BTT Movie Club member and you'd like to do a Mission Impossible watch along, you best head over there and cast your vote because it's losing bad. Oh, Iceman said, just wanted to pop in and say I've been so grateful for your content during a rough few months. Oh, I'm sorry to hear you're having a rough time, Iceman, but I'm glad you're keeping, you know, taking care of yourself and focusing on your mental health. And I'm glad I can help a little bit there. What's key lime coffee, SMR Goose? I've never even heard of that. Jacob says, seems like the new Little Mermaid, Indiana Jones, and Elementor are doing well on digital and streaming. Do you think this trend is the new normal? Yeah, I think it's really hard to get people to go to the theaters these days, Jacob. I think, you know, and Disney's just, Disney used to be the only one that could get people to go to a theater. Before the pandemic, Disney released one movie a month, and most people went to see just that movie because most people only go to one movie a month. And that's just really unfortunate that they've lost that. Fall 2 says McDonald's and key lime pie together is disgusting. <laughs> it might be, but I blame Loki. Faisal says, hi, Grace. Uh, favorite movie and TV show of 2023 so far? Mine are Barbie and Succession 4. Uh, that's hard for me to say off the top of my head, but I like the way you're thinking, Faisal. I like the way you're thinking. Mandy says, hi, Grace. I was just wondering if you had heard about the film Aristotle and Dante uh, discover the secrets of the universe. It's Latin, and I think Eugenio Derbez and Eva Longoria are in it, and Lin-Manuel Miranda is producing it. Oh, my goodness. I haven't heard of it, but I'm going to look it up now because, as many of you know, I love Eugenio Derbez. I'm a huge fan. Okay, I seem pretty caught up here. Luke says, Grace, me and my partner are getting married at Universal Studios Orlando in three weeks. I've never heard of a universal wedding. That's amazing. After almost 15 years together, celebrating the night before at Halloween Horror Nights, we know how to party. Oh, Luke, that's so exciting for you. Oh, you got to send me pictures of your, your universal wedding. I need to see that because, you know, most people usually get married at Disney, but that's fantastic. Oh, I love it. Uh, you know, Universal, yet another area where they're, they're competing with Disney. I hope you have a wonderful wedding, and that just seems like a great thing to do with Haunted Horror Nights the night before. You do know how to party. 
Let's see here. Ah, oh, thanks, Lawrence. Thank you. Ah, oh, thanks, Donis. I'm glad you're having a nice evening. Oh, it's 5.32, Aubrey? Thank you. I like talking to you guys. Roll the Bryce. I love Lana Del Rey. Back in the day when she was at her most popular, I loved her music. I still loved her Sleeping Beauty cover that she did for the first Maleficent movie. But I haven't really paid attention to her in a while, although I did like when she worked at Waffle House recently. I thought that was funny. Holly Jervis, what is the Coronation Street 50th anniversary? I'm not familiar with what that is, I'm afraid. All right, uh, let me do, let me do, let me do some shout outs. Time for the shout outs. Uh, let's see here. Franco, I like your quite frankly for Loki. That's funny. That's great. I guess I, I'll, I guess I do say a lot of quite frankly. All right, Q&A is over. I'm sorry, I must move on. Okay, shout out time. What are you doing? Where are you? How's it going? Let me say hi to you. Your hair, how can anyone hate Eugenio Derbez, especially in his native Mexico? Lander says, hi from Costa Rica, currently reviewing a script for my internship in a local film production company. Oh, that's great, Lander. I'm glad they're giving you good stuff to do. Alwatch says, walking on eggshells. Uh, uh, but we're in that, we're not in the Q&A section anymore, Alwatch. I'm sorry. Oh, that is a good point about what's going on in Israel with the Gaza Strip right now uh, and what James Gunn has written. Yeah, that's pretty bad for him. I think it was a dumb idea to begin with, quite frankly. But let's see how it works out. Some people will defend James Gunn no matter what and say he's going for it. But I, I just can't believe that anybody greenlit a script like that. Uh, let's see here. Jamie says, getting ready to see Pink in Phoenix. Oh, I heard her show is crazy. Have a great time. Lucas Blanco says, starting to work at Walt Disney World on Saturday. Oh, wow! And you don't know which ride. I think that they sometimes move you from different rides. I think if you work like in one of the lands, you can move from different rides. But sometimes you are specifically on a ride. Oh, Lucas, you got to tell us what ride you get. That's so exciting. Malik is playing fetch with their dog. Oh, I love it. Well, Jared Stamper, everyone's getting married. Jared Stamper is currently planning a wedding. What are some of your favorite things, experiences from weddings that you've been to? Oh, I don't know. I guess you don't want to ask too much of your guests, you know, because like they have to pay for it. <laughs> Think of that, you know, with the destination weddings and stuff like that. Just keep that in mind. Uh, let's see here. Ah, uh, thanks, Broderick. I appreciate your understanding. That's very sweet of you. Thank you. Alien Moose Studios is enjoying the fall footage in Maine. In Maine? Maine is stunning. Uh, I love the movie Paint and Place, which was filmed in Maine. It's, it's, uh, Maine is just gorgeous. Wow. If there's anywhere to experience fall fo foliage, it's in Maine. Lisa says, working late in Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, I'm glad we could keep your company, Lisa. The guy says, my birthday is on Thursday. And I'm in sunny California. I'm going to go to Boomers with DeFam. What's Boomers? But happy early birthday, the guy. Oh, thanks, Andre. Uh, I love to you in Chile. Shahar, I am also still listening to the NSYNC song, the new NSYNC song. I haven't, I haven't overplayed it yet. Tedder Tot is going to a Barbie-themed murder mystery party this weekend. Oh, that's so cool. Who's getting killed? I hope it's not poor Ken. Uh, Tanvi says, sending you positive vibes and well wishes to you and the amazing BTT community. It's 3 a.m. here in India. I'm going to bed. Ah, uh, thanks for staying up with this, Tanvi, and for the positivity. Uh, you, we can definitely feel it. Greatest ever is in Hawaii and says the land of eruption, I guess, that Michael Crichton book. That's fantastic. Ah, Matt's at work as usual. Hey, Matt. Oh, Holly, thank you. Coronation Street is a soap opera in the UK. I'm not familiar with the UK soap operas. Uh, Emilio says, hi, Grace. I love your content. I made my son a fan. Oh, hello to Emilio and son. Just saw Elemental and, asked, uh, and he asked, can I see what Grace said about this movie? Ah, he remembers fondly your The Last of Us breakdowns. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm glad that you watch these sh movies and shows together. And then my coverage. That makes me feel very nice. Ah. Uh, Ella Russell is cutting the grass right now. Uh, that, must, that must smell great. Uh, the Platinum Diva says, hi, everyone. I'm in Las Vegas getting ready for bed because uh, you're working the graveyard shift tonight. Ah, uh, good for you, Platinum Diva. I'm so excited about what's going on in Vegas. You, might, you have the Sphere. You have that cool F1 race coming up. Ah, uh, what a place. 
Little Baby Pizza says, I'm late to your party and I hate it, but I'll watch the video later from the beginning. That's good, lady, Little Baby Pizza, and you got to say hi. Hey, Little Baby Pizza. Uh, Brent, I did, I did answer your chat about MI7. I said it was currently a vote on the community page for BTT Movie Club members only. And it's not going well for Mission Impossible 7. Celine says, cooking like f for five, like always, here in New Jersey. Oh, that's good of you, Celine. That's great. I hope the five, I hope the other four appreciate it. Danny Sanchez says, much love from Guatemala. I just want to say I love your streams. Ah, thanks, Danny. And I always love your comments. I always see them. I might not always get to respond because, you know, sometimes, you know, Danny, I love your enthusiasm, but I can't respond to every one of them. But I see them. I notice them in the stream, Danny, and they make a difference. CB has a new puppy. I know I almost bought a puppy the other day. I was walking down uh, Lexington Avenue and there was a pet store there and there was a puppy sleeping. Here, I'll show you the picture. And I was like, this puppy is so cute. I can't stand it. And it took, I almost walked into the store and said, how much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> but then I was like, I can't have a dog. And I didn't get it. All right, so here it is. Look at him sleeping like that. Isn't that so cute? He's just flopped over. He just looks like he's got such personality. Oh, I almost bought a dog. But then I was like, I don't, that's not a good fit for me. <laughs> but Because I like to run around and do stuff. But boy, was that adorable. So cute. I like little fluffy dogs, little fluff balls. Ah, uh, Bubbles Emporium says, always here for my, for Grace's honesty. Ah, uh, thank you. Oh, but CB, congrats on your puppy. I'm so excited. Tweet me a photo. I'd love to see your puppy. Oh, uh, let's see here. I saw somebody. What happened there? Ah, uh, Mandy, thank, oh, I got, that, that was from before. Why did that just come up there? Oh, no, I don't want a cat, Josh. I babies. I, no, I house sat once when I babysat the cat. It was a beautiful cat named Marley, and I love that cat, uh, but I don't want to own a cat. Adam Byers says, quite frankly, I'm watching The Hobbit. Ah, hilarious. Love it. Rashad is also in Las Vegas getting ready for work. I hope, I know you have uh, multiple jobs right now, Rashad. I hope they're going well. Jimmy Fletcher says, spicy chicken McNuggets with Loki sweet and sour for dinner today. But there's no Loki today. Oh, but love from Guatemala. Ah, hey, Jimmy. I've never had spicy chicken McNuggets. I like to go with the traditional. I think because I eat McDonald's so, so few times, I'm like, I want to make sure I, I get what I wanted. David Q says, Working, work was so boring today, your stream saved the day. Ah, I'm so happy to hear that. Waiting for 5 p.m. so I can finish Castlevania Nocturne. Oh, that's great, David. I'm glad your day's almost over. And Elia says, get a lizard. Well, I got to tell you, Elia, when I was uh, in school, I, for, one, uh, for summer break, spring break, spring break, I looked after our pet chameleon, and boy, that lizard ran around the house. We let him out of the cage, and that was a mistake. We, it took a while to find him, so two times. One time he was hiding in the shades, and my dad accidentally flipped him out across the living room, which was really funny. And then one time we found him on the wheel of a desk chair, and he almost got run over when we were moving the chair. And we were like, don't hide there, little chameleon. But I like lizards. I also like snails. I had some snails when I was little. They're cute. I like, I like lizards. When I was in Florida, little lizards are always running around, and I, I took a picture of one. I'll show you a picture of the lizard. Hold on. Uh, I see I like animals. I just don't want to own any animals. I like animals in their own environment. I go, hey, animal, good for you. Have a great life. All right, where is it? There it is. Look at him. Oh, I can't see what I'm looking at. There he is. Ah, oh, he's so cute. A little newt. I also went on a, like a camping trip once when I was uh, in middle school, and we, I did not have a good time. Uh, they were like, this river drains into your drinking water. And we were like, don't animals go to the bathroom in this? But anyway, uh, there were newts, and we got to pick up the newts and hold them, and I really remember that. I got all wrapped up in my own stories. I'm supposed to be paying attention to yours. The Salvadorian says, having shaved ice in Hawaii. Oh, that sounds delicious. I love shaved ice. My family members really love shaved ice. They're getting khaki gory in, uh, at the Japanese pavilion in Epcot. Oh, let's see here. 
Fatin, you can't have snails as pets. They're great. Oh, look at this. Munchy Ice says, I earned my chef's coat today. Now going home to treat myself. Oh, the yes, chef. Oh, is it like the bear? Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's so great for you. I'm really happy. Congratulations. And the Ricardo Sanchez says, hoping my partner Brian has an amazing day planned for me tomorrow and that it involves lots of Scarlet Witch figurine presents. Oh, for your birthday? Love from both of us in Edinburgh. Oh, I'm sure he's reading your mind. Oh, hey, Juan. Thanks for joining and becoming a member. And Bubbles Emporium says, try not to laugh too loudly and wake up my neighbors at 11 p.m. 11 is not too late, Bubbles Emporium, but I love how respectful you are of your neighbors. Good for you. Uh, I love you guys. I better get going. Uh, thank you so much for joining me for today's live stream. No escargot, Nick Bellis. I don't, I won't eat escargot to this day. You know, uh, I'll tell you one other story. Uh, oh, Mr. Sweet Tooth. Let me go back and see your milestone chat. Hold on. I was staying at the Beverly Hills Hotel a couple of years ago with my family, and we stayed in one of the bungalows, uh, which was funny. They had security guards out there. And we tried to say hi to the security guards, but they couldn't talk to us. We, I was little. You know, this was like, um, you know, like a while back. And so we were like, oh, thanks for guarding the hotel. And they just wouldn't answer us. And we were like, wow, they're really serious about their job. But they had so many snails, and we were really upset because they kept getting run over on the Beverly Hills property, Beverly Hills Hotel property. And we were like, can't you just put some of those copper strips down to keep the snails from getting massacred? It was horrifying. So when we would walk from the bungalow to the hotel, we would pick up the snails off the ground and put them in the grass and be like, don't come on here, man. You're going to get killed by a room service cart. All right, Mr. Sweet Tooth, hi, Grace, watching from Africa, Kenya. Shout out to my friend Jens. Oh, and I love your picture, Mr. Sweet Tooth. So nice to see you. I'm glad I went back and I found that. All right, I better get going. I love talking to you guys. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Uh, no live stream and stuff tomorrow. I have something I need to do tomorrow, so I'll be out. Uh, but then back on Wednesday for more fun, but in the afternoon. Uh, uh, I, I got to get my hair done on Wednesday. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll have new hair on Wednesday. Uh, you know, I just gotta, you know, just gotta do the upkeep. All right, everybody, bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye.